What is up, y'all? What is up? What is up? How we doing? We are live. I'm on Facebook. I'm excited to be here. Uh, if you guys are not catching this live, make sure you guys take a moment. Like my Facebook page. Follow my Facebook page. And turn on live notifications. And, and tonight, I'm talking about what you must do if you have to retake the MCAT. This is a common scenario for students. And I wouldn't say most students retake it, but a good number of students retake it. And you should hope to never have to retake it because it's, it's an uphill battle. It's stressful. It's terrible. And after you bomb the MCAT once, you feel horrible. Um, so tonight I'm give you some strategies for recovering from that original take, retaking the test effectively. And I'm also going to tell you guys about something that I'm excited about for tomorrow. Um, so yeah, it'll be a fun time. What's up, Richard? Zora, what is up? So a couple things. We're going to talk about four things you have to do if you're going to retake the MCAT and be successful. So the very first thing is to recognize right off the bat, as we always talk about, we have to take responsibility for everything that we are and everything that happens to us in our lives. If you got a low MCAT score, do not start the blame game where you're trying to blame everybody else around you, all the products you use, you're trying to blame the test makers, you're trying to blame your test day, you're trying to blame the seasons, whatever it might be. Don't do it. Don't do it, guys. The very first thing, if you want to have a successful retake after a failed first take, you have to accept responsibility for what you done to make that test score happen or what you didn't do to make that test score happen. Does that make sense? Right? What's up, Mark? What's up, Utham? Before you can go about setting about a right plan to do right, you have to recognize what you did wrong. And if you, all you do is assign blame, you're not going to be in a position to mentally do better the second time because A, you'll feel like things are out of your control, but then also you won't really be motivated to make the changes that are required because you don't really think it was your fault. Like, oh, you know what? Studying a little bit harder or studying a little bit differently, it's not going to make a difference because it was about how unfair the test was. It was just a hard test day. You have to first accept responsibility, take that on and say, it's on me to get the score I want and I'm going to go get it. I'm going to make it happen. So that's number one. You've got to make sure that you establish that low test score is absolutely my fault. Now, what am I going to do to fix it? Right. And the second thing is, is now that we've said it's all of our responsibility, it's all us. I blame myself for my MCAT score. Once we assign that blame, we then make it guiltless blame. And Brent said mama mentality. Kasim, what is up? Uh, mama mentality. That's exactly right. Right. It's all on me. It's on Kobe's shoulders. Right. It's on me to get this test score. I didn't get it done, but I'm not going to feel guilty about it. I'm not going to feel ashamed. If I'm Kobe and I miss 50 shots, I'm going to make the next 10. So now that you assign, like, listen, this MCAT score is my fault. I'm not that score. And I see this step beat a lot of students where they feel like, man, I was trying to get 500, I got 498. I was trying to get 505, I was got 504. I was trying to get 510, I got 495. Right? They didn't meet their goal and they internalized that score as all they're capable of doing. Sometimes we do this with our classes, right? Or our grades where we get that B and we think, "Oh, I'm just not good enough to get an A. I'm a B student when it comes to OCAM. I'm a B student at these things. And we internalize this mentality that our grades or our test score are us. And I, you have to, if you're going to do better the second time, you've got to have the confidence factor to believe, shoot, let me shake that off. Whew, man, for a 450 MCAT, which is not possible, but a 450 MCAT, woo, that's awful. But I ain't the 450, I'm the 520. Let's go get it. And every day you're thinking 520, 520, 520. And you think it's so hard and you believe it's so hard that you become that 520. 520, 520. Right? So understand that you're not your first MCAT score. You can be better than that. The third thing you must do is that you absolutely must do something different. How many of you guys are trying something? You set a goal and you try it. And you know what? I'm going to lose weight. And you try it a certain way. And you fail miserably. How many of you guys try to repeat the same thing the next year? Like when January comes around. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get a gym membership and start working out. Uh, and then the following January, you do the same thing. Right? Or you're in a bad relationship. Next thing you know, next relationship, you're like, man, why am I so unhappy? Oh, because I'm dating the same exact person, just with different color hair. 
right? How many times do we do the same thing expecting a different result? And I see students all the time, and I talk about this in my course, where I slam all these prep companies for offering you guys, right, score guarantees. And they tell you with score guarantees, oh yeah, you're guaranteed to get the score or you can retake our class. And the question I ask is very simple, very straightforward. You just took their class. You now are about to retake the MCAT. You're going to retake that same class and you're going to expect to boost your score by 10 points. Who does that make sense to? Who believes you're going to do the same exact prep class that got you a 495 and now you're going to get a 510 doing that same prep class, that same regimen? Who thinks that's reasonable? Seriously, not rhetorical, guys. Arlie Octopi, what is up? Trineth, hello. Lindsay, hello. Who thinks that's feasible? Like, oh, I'm going to do the same exact prep and my score is going to go up by 15 points. Kasim said zip. Lindsay said no way, right? Absolutely not. Because it is almost impossible for you to do the same exact prep, the same exact thing, and get a different result, let alone a 10-point difference. And so when companies give you a score guarantee, they're basically ganking you for money and making you feel secure in a possibly inferior product. Because yes, you're like, oh yeah, you know what? <laughs> worst comes to worst, if, if I don't get it done, <laughs> then uh, you know, uh, I can always retake this class. That makes me feel warm and cozy. To me, that doesn't make me feel warm and cozy. And this may be a little old reference for you guys, but what I think about when I think about score guarantees is the movie Tommy Boy. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Tommy Boy. Is that real old school for some people? <laughs> Who's ever seen Tommy Boy with Chris Farley and David Spade? Ebenezer, what is up? If nobody's ever seen the movie, I won't make the reference. But that's what I think of when I think of score guarantees. Okay, so Terrence says he loves Tommy Boy. Okay, <laughs> so then we can talk about Time Boy. So real quick, to get the premise of the movie for you guys. You guys all know Chris Farley. If you've ever seen any of his movies, he always plays the big, fat, goofy guy who's not very intelligent. Well, in Tommy Boy, his father owns a, uh, a auto parts company, particularly brake pads. And then the dad dies, and then so it's up to him to try to sell brake pads to save the company. And he's a horrible salesman. And then he has a breakthrough moment where he actually sells a pair of brake pads. And what he says is he's talking to this guy, this uh, store who's going to sell brake pads. And the, he says to the, to the guy, listen, we have great brake pads. They're the best. They're the safest. They're made with incredible uh, material. And the guy says to him, well, it doesn't have a guarantee on the box. He's like, well, my customers see that guarantee. They feel they rest secure. <laughs> and what he responds to, he's like, yeah, guarantee is great. But when your car doesn't stop and you go off the road and your family's burning on fire, how great is the guarantee then? And that's what I like in score guarantees too. They'll let your whole test game, your whole medical school dreams go up in flames and they don't care because they already got your money. They do not care. So they're like, listen, come retake our class while they laugh at you. While they sit there, ha, 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 this idiot's going to retake our class. They can get a higher score. Oh, ho, 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 ho. chuckles. $2,500 they gave us. Ha, 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 ha. And they laugh. That's what score guarantees are. So whatever you do, right? And this is true even for my course. If you guys take my MCAT course, I feel that my MCAT course will put you in an excellent position to score well. But if you take my course and you don't score well, you should either revisit the course and figure out what you weren't doing in the course or you should get someone else leading you because maybe we didn't connect or whatever it is, but I wouldn't advise you to retake my course if you feel like you did everything in the course. Now, a lot of times, right, and this is what the next part is, is you have to do everything you know is right to score well. And it's interesting because, right, a lot of people's MCAT scores are coming back now um, from the earlier testing period. And so I'm getting emails from different people and messages from different people. And I've been swamped this week, and I have a good announcement for you guys um, in a second. But I've been swamped this week as I'm swamped every week, I feel like. But I'm getting these emails, and I'm starting to hop on the phone with some of these people and talk about, hey, what's going on? What happened? I don't understand how you couldn't execute with the, with the course. What's going on? And the common thread, it's not everybody, right? Because sometimes you just do your best, and that's what your best is. 
But the common thread I'm finding with people is that they aren't applying what they know they should be doing. And the reason I know this is because they lead the conversation. I was like, so listen, did you do stuff in the course? And what happens is people say, well, I tried, but, and there's always that but. Well, you know what? I tried to do the scheduling thing, getting eight hours of sleep, but I couldn't get eight hours of sleep because my job. I couldn't get eight hours of sleep because I had uh, school. Um, I couldn't set aside a good chunk of time to study because I had work. I had these things. And there's always excuses that come up. And not like saying they're not real excuses. We all have stuff we have to do, right? You have to work, you have to do whatever. But in the course I talk about, you have to create time for the MCAT, right? And this is a segue. So last night, I did a, two nights ago, I did a stream on YouTube. And I forget what I was talking about on the stream. Not important. But it was funny because people were commenting, talking about like, oh, my courses are really great. And somebody said, yeah, but the courses are super expensive and I'm a student, I'm not some rich millionaire, I can't afford the course. And then I said, listen, you put your money where your mouth is, whatever. And then he followed that with, well, even if I pay the money, I don't have time to take a full course. And it's the same way with the MCAT. People think they don't have time to study for the MCAT. But our time, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. It's all about how you choose to use that time. And a great quote I saw this week, which I wrote this whole long thing out about it because I thought it was a, a super deep quote. And I'll just quickly say it to you guys. But the quote was, and I forget who said it, and I apologize. Whoever said this quote, this famous old person, probably is dead. Whoever said this quote, but the quote was, if you have more than three priorities, you have no priorities. And I thought that was like, I'm like, that is deep. Because when it comes to time management, when it comes to setting goals to getting to medical school or getting your MCAT score, I, one of the biggest things I think people battle with, students, pre-meds, young people, is this time management, is this prioritization in their lives where they feel like they have to do everything. Oh, I got to do these 10 things. got to do these 15 things. I got to do all these things. And what I consistently tell people, if you want to be successful, don't try to do everything. Try to do what you're passionate about and what you need to do well. If your GPA is low, why the heck are you focusing on research? The GPA is going to keep you out of medical school. Focus there. If you're in your senior year of college and you're about to apply and you have the choice, and we talked about this on the live stream the other night, between focusing on the MCAT and using all your free time to for the MCAT or doing the MCAT, a research project, you're the president of your club, you this other thing, it's time out. You got to get rid of the presidency club, get rid of the research, because that MCAT, without that MCAT score, nobody cares that you were the greatest president in the history of the world of your club. Because you won't get to the readers, you'll be weeded out because your MCAT score is 490. But you, you have all these priorities, but you have no real priorities. Right? And you see this where people try to pull you in a different directions. You're like, oh, I don't know which I should do. Like, should I go to the party here? Should I go but There's got to be a clear pecking order in your life of what matters to you. And when you have that kind of focus, you'll be able to execute a lot better. And I see it all the time. This, this, this thing that happens when people feel like, I have all these things to do plus the MCAT. No, you have the MCAT to do plus a whole bunch of other things. And you've got to focus in on what really matters matters and have clear priorities and i'll say that quote again because that's an excellent quote if you have more than three priorities you have no priorities and that's true with the mcat guys you have to decide what you need to do and actually execute on that and get it done and it's not about all the excuses it's not about everything else you got to do it's about executing on the mcat and if you didn't do right the first time the number one thing that students make is they didn't do what they needed what they knew they needed to do and the biggest thing they didn't they needed to do that they often don't do is spend the time. It's darn near impossible to work 50 hours a week, take a full course load, be doing research, and have adequate time to put in MCAT study. Yet, guys, I always get these emails and calls from students who are trying to do that. And it's like, I tell this story when I'm on an event sometimes, but I had a student who had this full ride to a college. I'll, I'll shorten the story. Essentially, this guy had a full ride to a college. Instead of just taking out a couple extra loans because he wanted to, like, the housing was expensive, 
instead of taking out a couple thousand dollars, two thousand dollars in loans, he was like, oh, if I get a work study job, then that'll cover the other two thousand dollars of housing. Well, I said that's a bad idea because you're gonna be spreading yourself thin doing this work and all this whatever stuff. He's like, no, 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 it's gonna save me two thousand dollars. I said that's nothing in the scheme of everything. Well, it turns out. He worked, it pulled his focus off of his grades, his grades were too low, he lost a lot of his scholarship funding, and as a consequence, it ended up costing him a lot of money in undergrad, and then he had to do a post back program, which cost him a lot more money, and I said, look at what you did to yourself. You couldn't prioritize and recognize what needed to be done, and for $2,000, you essentially cost yourself $60,000 plus the stress of having to go a different alternate route. And this is what happens with MCAT. People are like, listen, I can't afford to stop working. Fair. But what if you cut your work in half, took out a $5,000 credit card, and maxed that bad boy out while you were studying for MCAT? And that sounds crazy. But what's $5,000 in a maxed out credit card to allow you to live and to have 20 extra hours a week to put in the MCAT if you get into medical school? It's nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. And that's what people do not understand. You have to be willing to think that way and have that mentality of this hustler, of this person who's going to do whatever's required to get the job done. If I know I need something, I'm doing it. And a practical example of this I tell this in my interview course is I talk about you look good, feel good, play good, right? That's the, that's the saying. If you show up to interviews and you look like a million bucks, people treat you like a million bucks. If you show up looking like shabby and cheap, then people will treat you shabby and cheap. Whether that's fair or not, that's the reality. So when I was going for medical interviews, I didn't have money. Yet, you know what I did? Used my credit card, I maxed that bad boy out, and I had $3,000 suits on. That may seem crazy to you guys, but that's the reality, and that's what I was willing to do to get the job done. And you guys need to be able to do that for your MCAT or whatever it is. Whatever you have to sacrifice, you get the job done. Because it'll come back to you in spades if you make sacrifices. If you make that choice, to make the right sacrifices and prioritize the right things, you're going to get to your goals. Are you guys with me? Do you guys feel what I'm saying right now? Do you hear what I am telling you right now about this MCAT and about how you can successfully retake it? And successfully do anything in your life and retake anything in your life. So just second go around, these four things apply, right? Recognizing that your failure the first time is your fault. Recognizing that that failure is not you, you are more than that. And recognizing that to bridge that gap between your score, and who you really are, you got to do something different. And the culmination of all this, guys, and I mentioned prioritization. The, the last thing I'll say is determination. you got to be determined to get stuff done. You cannot let things sway you. And the perfect example is, I'm telling you guys, I'm really excited. And this has all been under wraps, and it's been a little minute in the works here, but I'm very, very excited to announce, guys, this is kind of cool stuff. And this is premature, but whether it happens or doesn't happen, I'm excited about the opportunity and what it says about what I've worked for and what I've strived to build and the net effect of that work. Tomorrow after work, I'm going to hop on a plane and travel to an interview uh, for a director of medical school admissions at a medical school. And this is an exciting moment for me. Because it will be an assistant dean position, associate dean, and a uh, director of medical school uh, admissions for a medical school. And I can't say the medical school yet because I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. But it's, it's exactly what I talked about here. It's exactly what I talked about here, guys. I set out, right? I tried going through other people's programs and working with people to get stuff done. And I didn't feel like they were hearing my message. People were saying, oh, you're too real. You're too this, too this. But I said, it's not about making people feel good. It's about making people get into medical school. It's about making people get where they want to go. It's about delivering. And I've been working at this. And people said it couldn't be done during residency and all this kind of stuff. And people said, oh, you don't know anything more than what people know. And I've put in time studying admissions, studying, studying, doing all this stuff. It's been that grind. I tell you guys, prioritizing, sacrificing, being here with you guys right now instead of out there with my family, right? Being with focusing and prioritizing what you want to achieve. 
And with that focus and with that energy and with that consistency, just going at it cannot be stopped. You get achievement. And to go to this interview tomorrow is a major achievement for me because here it is, a major medical school wants me to run some stuff, wants me to be on faculty, wants me to... That recognition of that hard work. And I bring this up because for many of you guys, you guys know who I'm talking to out there. You guys know my background, right? As someone who people told you couldn't get to medical school. And now what if I'm a faculty member at a medical school? What does that say? And I say this to tell you guys, what makes me work so hard, what makes me get the job done is a quote that I came across a long, long time ago. I don't know who said it, but in the movie Men of Honor, they ask, what made you try so hard? What makes you go so hard? And he says, because they told me I couldn't have it. And for me, what I always say to myself every morning is, why are we grinding today? Why are we working hard today? Why are we getting this done today? And I tell myself, it's because I'm coming for everything they said I could not have. I'm coming for everything they said I couldn't have. Not a morsel, not a crumb. I'm coming, I'm taking it all. You said I couldn't have this little piece of medical school? I couldn't get into medical school? No, nah, now I'm taking over. I'm going to run a medical school. That's the mentality that I approach it with. And if you guys, right, and Kasim just said it, we takers around his parts. We take in everything. We take in everything. If you want medical school, you got to take it because nobody's going to hand it to you. Everybody's going to try to take it from you. You got to hold on to it for dear life and say, I'm taking medical school. If you got to retake the MCAT, you got to go take that MCAT score. It's not just going to happen. It takes sweat, it takes tears, it takes grind, it takes upsetness. But when you work that hard, the outcome will come. When you get past the excuses and you focus on domination, mm, when you say I'm taking it all, you're going to get it all. You're going to get it all. Maybe not on the first try. Maybe that first MCAT didn't go well. But if you focus in, See, I'm going to get it. You're going to get it. You're going to get it, guys. Don't be defeated by a poor MCAT. Don't be defeated by other people telling you you're dumb. Don't be defeated by people telling you you can't get a good MCAT score. Don't be defeated by people. Don't be defeated by things. Just refocus and recognize I am everything. I will get the job done. And go take it. Take it. Does that make sense? And I'm, I'm going to get out of here on that. But I'm fired up. I'm excited because life is beautiful. Life is amazing. And the world is amazing because despite all the craziness in the world, you can make your life exactly what you want it to be if you say, I want it. And you're willing to do whatever is required to go get it. Are you willing to outwork everybody? Are you willing to out-prepare everybody? If you are, the results will come. It's science. If I work 110% and you work 70%, I'm smoking you. That's what it is. And until some of you guys, and this is what happens, right? And this is why I, I, I harp so hard and there's no excuse to just dominate. Because so many people aren't in that mindset. They're in the, just settle, <laughs> hope I survive mindset and that's not how you're going to be dominant that's not what's going to be and the biggest effect i would probably say of being in my groups or being in my coaching or being in my courses is it gives you a roadmap for things and by having that roadmap and having me yell at you for however long the, the course is to say get your life together it takes people from a place of i don't know what to do and i don't believe i can achieve to a place of i know exactly what to do and i believe i can achieve anything and it's one of my favorite emails to give them students is, listen, I don't know, whatever you said in that course, I feel like I could conquer the world right now. That's how you got to feel and you will go conquer the world. Right? And kasim has been with me. He says, going to dominate his mammalogy test tomorrow. Going to take that. That's how we roll, right? We takers. Be a taker. Go get your future. Don't wait for somebody to hand it to you. Plain and simple. Thank you guys for listening. Like and share the video. We'll be back Sunday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time live. Um, yeah. Yeah. 2018. I, I keep saying 2018. 
There's so much good stuff coming, guys. I'm so excited. So excited. If I could ever get out of my busy busyness with all this craziness happening, 2018 is going to be fun. I'm excited for it. If you're not already, while we're talking about MCAT, get in my MCAT course. How to dominate the MCAT without a expensive prep class. It's really affordable. It's really effective. It's really a great course. Go get it. And yeah. Thank you guys. I'll let you guys know how it goes tomorrow. Hope I don't embarrass myself. I uh, wish I knew something about interviewing. Very